You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. That bad <laughs> man just showed up last night and reminded y'all, excuse me, you must have forgot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore data. So there is a pretty good amount of news going on right now. So I'm kind of at that decision point. And I think what I'm going to do is put the little series thing on pause. I like doing that anyways because after a while it just kind of drones on. So we'll come back to that when we come back to that, the, the whole top 10 thing. I'm not dropping it because we got somebody very important to talk about, and that's David Bakhtiari. And, and understand, some of these are obvious, and that's fine. But I want to put a fine point on it for anybody that's not a Packer fan that's listening. Um, that, you know, I mean, it again... I go through quite a bit of information. I'm trying to be as reasonable as possible. Anybody can just say stuff. I um, I spent the last day or two days or whatever wiping out my YouTube subscriptions. I went on and just got rid of everything and then subscribed to all the YouTube channels for this fan-to-fan network that I'm getting involved in because I really just want to hone in on what's going I tell you what, it's pretty awesome because it's like I've got it's kind of like ESPN, but these guys know what they're talking about because they're diehard fans. So that was just my news for the day. It was just football news. And it's awesome because you get insights and perspectives from people that care about the team as opposed to just people who just write about football. And as we know, you know, as much as you love the national news media folks, when they write about the Packers, there's always that, that information and then they dive in a little bit to the point where there's a couple things in there where you're like, well, that's, I mean, that's not really... Really? That's that's not a thing. Sorry. Thank you for the facts and information, but you're 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 wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. But with following these channels, you also get the bias, which I'm fine with because I want to know the perspectives. I I like even just being on Packers Twitter to know Packer fans' perspectives. That's why I always try to sometimes come at things from an angle that seems weird. But it's like, well, it's because I know what Packers fans think about this situation. But I'm hearing, you know. Why isn't Allen Robinson put in the top 10? I'm hearing Matt Stafford is being disrespected, not being top 10. Everybody wants to push their guys into the top 10. And I understand that, and I respect that from a fan standpoint. But as much as I probably should do that, I don't think I do that. Again, if it's if it's on the fence, like it was yesterday, where it's like, yeah, Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers, I kind of got them 50-50. I'm going to go ahead and give it to Rodgers. I'll do that. And I don't even care if it's not true. It's, you know, it's, it's close enough to 50-50. I'm giving it to Rodgers. But I'm not going to take a guy who I think is like, you know, 14th, 15th, 16th, fairly comfortably outside of the top 10 and just push him in because I'm a Packers fan. I believe, let's just let's just summarize it right now. Not saying we won't go back, but let's just, let's just look at it. And for the record, some of this is going to be before I do the homework. So I, made, I, I reserve the right to change my mind. I believe Aaron Rodgers is a top five quarterback. I believe Aaron Jones is a top five running back. I believe Adam, Devontae Adams is a top five wide receiver. Now that alone, and look, the, the other thing that, that I really realized from watching a lot of these other networks, and you know, it, it depends. Different fan bases are different. Plus, you know, the hosts are just different individuals, so it changes. But man, I start to feel spoiled as a Packer fan. I was watching the Derrick Henry news come out and how just absolutely elated and excited they were that he signed a contract, which is part of the news, which I'm kind of, you know, I should keep that separate, but that's the thing. And it's like, dude, Titans fans are just doing backflips about a running back. And I, I already know, like, if Aaron Jones gets locked up, people, you're going to have Packer fans, some of them are just going to be like, I mean, that's a waste of money. Some are going to be excited, like, all right, cool. Some are going to be, you know, it's just it's just a different environment. And I think we know we're spoiled. I think we get that. We understand that. We demand per- perfection. But I kind of don't like that we've become that. I don't like that I've become that way. I don't remember very well, but I remember vaguely 
when back, you know, back in the day, there were some years where the Packers just weren't very good. And I remember going into games with no expectation of winning and the excitement and elation just from the feeling that, you know, it's, it's, it's possible. They could do it. And we're kind of there now, but it's from a different perspective where it's almost like we're just jaded. How dare they not be the best team in football? And rather than just acknowledging that you can't be the best team in football for 20 years straight, sometimes you're going to have down years. And by down years, I mean being thir- having 13 wins and going to the NFC Championship. But, you know, the run defense needs to tighten up a bit. Man, we, we I don't know. We, myself included, not all of us, some of you are good, but I'm just saying maybe some of us should just take a trip out to, like, chill out island, you know, where, where nothing illegal is going on, by the way. Every, every time you mention an island, it gets a little dicey. My island will be, you know, fruits, vegetables, vitamins, Bibles, um, mineral water, some exercise equipment, you know, just all good things. But But really, it's just... Let, I mean, let's continue. Corey Lindsley, top 10 center. I know I kind of dog on him a little bit, but, you know, there's only 32 of them, and um, centers are relatively replaceable. It's, it's kind of like running back in a way, but maybe even a little bit more replaceable. I don't know. And I don't think I dog him. I, it's just the fact that I think it's possible he could be leaving soon. I was a big fan of Lindsley before he won the job. I wanted him to win the job, and he did, and I was excited about it. But, you know, it's one of those things. I just I don't know that he gets re-signed. And being top 10, again, doesn't mean he's elite. He's not, you know, Peters or whatever. Um, I don't think Elton Jenkins is there yet, but he's got that upside. I will depart from uh, Packers fans on that one. Kenny Clark, I believe, is a top five defensive tackle in football. That's definitely debatable. I look forward to figuring that out. But I don't think it's really debatable that he's at least top 10. Zadarius Smith, and understand, this is another one kind of like wide receiver where it's, it's tough competition. I'm going to say that he's top 10. Now, there's no question he was top 10 in 2019. He may have been number one. Depending on the metric, I think it's fair to say he was arguably the best in football. Now, the question is moving forward. And I've already said I expect him to regress because he had a season that was one of the best. I mean, for those of you that missed the episode, Zadarius Smith had a season that elite edge rushers have maybe once or twice in their career. So if he's able to maintain this for any period of time, you've got to talk about Zedarius as one of the best ever. Now the question is, even if he regresses, which is fine, he can still be top 10 and regress. Because again, you know, guys like Khalil don't have years like this very often. The question is, will he maintain that top 10? I, I, I don't know, but I'm going to say yes. Now, I'll probably stop it there. I don't think Alexander's top 10, but he clearly has that upside. I don't think Savage or Amos are there, although Amos is debatable. If you look on a multi-year level, he's up there. The, the thing with Amos, though, he doesn't have that, that... He's one of those guys that's just consistently really good. But he's never really going to be like a Jamal Adams. And you figure if there's five or six of the Jamal Adams-y guys, and then there's going to be a bunch of guys that have those one really good years or a flash of two or so good years, he, he'll probably get pushed up out of the top 10. He might be in it. He's probably going to be a little bit out of it, somewhere between the 10 and 15 range. But who cares? He's a great safety. Savage easily has that kind of upside. He's the kind of guy that could get up to that Jamal Adams type level. He's not there. I don't care. Point is, though, there's a lot here. Definitely no reason to be complaining. And for the record, I don't think I missed anybody. So for the what about Preston Smith, what about Kevin King crowd, I mean, look, Technically, Kevin King has that upside. He's got a long way to go before I even put him in that conversation, though. Um, he ranked 65th out of 115 cornerbacks last year. He had the best year of his career. So it's a little silly for me to just say I think he is or can be. Of course, if he can be, a lot of people can be. But we got a ways to go. Preston was 56th out of 102. He had a lot of sacks. But remember, so did Kyler Fackrell. And I'm not saying Preston Smith is Kyler Fackrell, but I'm also not going to say Preston Smith is a top 10 or even a top 15, top 20 edge rusher. He's got a ways to go for that. But again, it's 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 not just being biased. This is fairly straightforward stuff. And, and the other thing is, a lot of teams are going to have top 10 players. Right, again, top 10 is about top third. So one in three teams has a top 10 cornerback, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, whatever. But when you look at the actual positions, top five quarterback, top five wide receiver, top five 
offense, you know, left tackle, top 10 edge rusher and defensive tackle. I mean, these are cornerstone pieces. So, I mean, you know, people can be disrespectful all they want. It doesn't matter. The Pack- As I've said and will continue to say, the Packers have everything they need to win a Super Bowl. It's just a matter of putting it all together. They don't have a perfect team. Nobody has a perfect team. The Saints are close, but they got spanked by the Vikings, which is just a becoming an annual tradition. The Vikings' only purpose is to sneak into the playoffs, spank the Saints, and then uh, call it call it a year. And I appreciate them for that. I'm fine with that. As long as they get out of the way so that we can go on to win a Super Bowl, I don't mind the Vikings doing the dirty work. But yeah, we got to uh, start having a little bit more appreciation. I got to start having a little bit more appreciation for uh, for how much talent we have on this team. Because again, I'll I'll just go, I'll I'll switch teams. I'll go to the teams at the top of the list. Arizona Cardinals, um, top five quarter, top ten quarterback, no. Top ten running back, no. Top ten offensive lineman anywhere, no. Top ten wide receiver, yeah, probably with Hopkins, unless he just completely tanks. Uh, top ten tight end with Max Williams, possibly, but who cares? It's a tight end. Top five or top ten corner, no. Well, they got Patrick Peterson. Okay, try to back that up with any information. Ready, go. Top 10 linebacker, no. Isaiah Simmons doesn't count. He hasn't played a single snap yet. He doesn't just get top 10 status because you liked his college tape. Top 10 safeties, no. Sorry, Buda Baker. Top 10 edge rusher, maybe with Chandler Jones. You could make a case for it. Again, edge rusher's tough competition. He is 30 years old, so, you know, if you wanted to bump him out, wouldn't hate it. But again, I mean, that's, that's the Cardinals. And that's a team, by the way, everyone's given a ton of love to. They got nothing, man. Bad offensive line. I mean, I don't know how many wide receivers you want to give him credit for. Fitzgerald is, how old is Fitzgerald now? He is 37. He's he's 36.8 years old, so he'll be 37 this year. 37! And by the way, and I, I hate to even say the words because Larry Fitzgerald is one of the greatest of all time, one of the most loved players of all time for a reason. If you look at his PFF grades, they have gone backwards every year since 2015. In order from that year, 89, 83, 80, 73, 70. If that trend continues, he will have his first year not graded as a good player ever. Technically, 2012, he had a grade of 69.4. I'm going to give him a a little bit of a Larry Fitzgerald bonus and call that 70. 70 is the line for good. Houston Texans, playoff team. Do they have a top 10 quarterback? Yeah, Deshaun Watson. Top 10 running back? No. Top 10 offensive lineman anywhere. You could argue Laramie Tunsil. I would argue that you're wrong. Top 10 wide receiver? Nope, not anymore. Top 10 corner? No, their corners are garbage. Top 10 defensive tackle? No. Top 10 linebackers? No. Top 10 uh, safeties? Maybe you could argue Justin Reed. Um, But I don't think, I think he's just outside. So you have a quarterback and you have J.J. Watt, who plays about a half a year. I mean, he's consistently given you about eight games a year. That's a perennial playoff team. Every If somebody said today, I think the Texans are going to be in the playoffs, people would just shrug and go, yeah, probably, I don't know. Packers are a good team, man. And then, of course, there's a team that I pick on all the time, Kansas City Chiefs. They got elite players, no question. They also have not great edge rushers. Yes, I'm talking about Clark. Their linebackers are trash. Their corners are trash. Offensive line outside of Schwartz, not too great. Schwartz is the right tackle. Um, and Schwartz is not a gar- I mean, he's 31 years old. Yes, that includes Eric Fisher, who was a number one overall pick several years ago. He's just kind of meh. I mean, the Chiefs are actually just kind of similar to the Packers. They got the quarterback. They got a tackle. They got a wide receiver. They have a defensive tackle. The only real difference is our other elite player is an edge rusher. Theirs is a tight end. Okay. Good team, man. But anyways, we got news to talk about today. That's what the the goal was. This was not part of the goal. But before we get to the newsy news, why don't we go ahead and take a break? If you are not in the Packernet Podcast Facebook group, please do so. Um, please like the Packernet Podcast Facebook page. Again, if you are a avid YouTube watcher, please check out uh, Pack Daddy NFL. That is my YouTube channel. I think um, I've been tracking my UPS stuff. One of my items just showed up in Illinois. I'm hoping it's coming Friday so that I can start pumping out content starting Saturday. That's my hope. Fingers crossed. But uh, Pack Daddy NFL, also going to be putting videos in the Facebook page. So either way, just do one of those things. 
Uh, support the podcast, patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy. You can support the podcast for as little as a dollar a month. I've also got the fundraiser on Facebook if you want to just do a one-time payment. Um, even, a, even a dollar would be huge and greatly appreciated. Definitely helps, especially around the off-season. Um, these are the the doldrums where the uh, the work is hard and the, the perks are less. What else? I think that's good. There's also the Teespring store if you want to get some merchandise. I got the the mask if you're looking for one. Get a good looking one as opposed to the just crummy little white ones that I always have to put on my face. T-shirts, etc., etc. But anyways, let's take a break and uh, look at some of the kind of big news that's been going on. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in your entire life of test driving a phone network? Well, now you have, because U.S. Cellular is going to let you test drive their network for free for 30 days. So anywhere you go where you got some dead spots, where your service isn't super strong, you're trying to listen to the podcast and it drops out when you go here because you got no internet service anymore, real simple, just whip out your phone, Do a little beep boop bop boop. That's you pushing the buttons to go to the right place. And you can get the app and try it out for yourself. So go ahead and test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days. That's U.S. Cellular built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. So go to uscellular.com for all the details. So let's start with the lesser of the big news. Um, The deadline to come to agreements with guys that uh, were tagged. In other words, teams will tag a guy, and then you've got X amount of time to come to long-term agreements before it just becomes official that you are just tagged. That ran out, and um, so there's a lot of excitement. First and foremost, the guys that did not get tagged, namely Dak Prescott, uh, caused a bit of a, a stir and I again, I only know that because I've been checking out these fan channels. And I'll tell you what, Dallas Cowboys fans are depressed, and Eagles fans especially are just having a field day. Because listen, there's been rumors swirling forever. I mean, you got Dallas Cowboys fans out there literally saying, "Listen, we already know he's getting signed. They love Dak. We know how many years. We know how much money. It's already been leaked." Get out of our face. Dak is the man. Because that's their whole thing. Dak is the man, right? And everybody on that team got signed. Ezekiel got signed. They're, they're throwing out money left and right. And it's a mat. Right. The fear for, not fear, but the, the thought process for everybody else is you guys are uh, burning through quite a bit of money and you haven't locked up a quarterback yet, right? You're locking up a running back. I don't even remember who else they got. Um, free agency. That they're, they're spending money, and the question is, are they going to be able to get a quarter? Now, they did have the money, but still, as a non-Cowboys fan, you're looking at it and saying, quarterback should be more important. You definitely value a quarterback that's really, really good. Maybe they don't value him necessarily as being really, really good, or at least you know they, they can't come to an agreement because Dak thinks he's better than the Cowboys do. There's a, a difference of opinion in terms of value, because you pay a guy what you think he's worth. So it seems as though the team doesn't value him as highly as Dak seems to value himself. And so you start thinking to yourself, well, maybe this isn't going to really pan out. As I've already said, I didn't have Dak in my top 10. If I'd have gone through all the quarterbacks, I don't know how far he would have fallen. Maybe Wentz would have been higher. I don't know. 
but it just makes you wonder if maybe this isn't really going to pan out. And when a guy gets signed to a tag, as much as Cowboys fans are going to want to play it down like it doesn't matter, he's still getting paid, we still get the quarterback, they'll come to an agreement next year. The problem is the reason Dak doesn't want to get tagged, which is a ton of money, and if they try to tag him next year, it's going to be like $60 billion. I think it literally is like $61 million something. It's, it's insane. So it's not going to happen. But the fear that exists is, you know, potential injury. Uh, if, if the play, you know, if I don't play quite as well, if they come to the determination that they've built so much around this team that you can kind of plug and play, maybe we can just go out in free agency and, and get a, a good, I mean, a, again, if a guy like Nick Foles hits, not that you want a guy like Nick Foles necessarily, but think how much money you're saving. You know, I'm just throwing it out there. So obviously everybody that is a Dallas Cowboys hater, which let's face it is most of the league not Cowboys fans, are basically like the Patriots. Which I, I, I'll be honest, I give Cowboys fans credit. It, it, back when I was a kid, it was like the ultimate bandwagon thing. Like everybody wore the Dallas Cowboys jackets and jerseys and all that stuff. And it was just like, if you didn't really care, if you didn't have a diehard allegiance, you were probably a Cowboys fan, or at least wore the jersey and pretended you were. But the people that have hung on, those people that you thought were just lame and just wearing jerseys, and it's like, dude, you live in Illinois. Why are you wearing a Cowboys jersey? Get a life. Those people have dug their heels in through years of garbage play, and people still rag on the Cowboys and Cowboys fans as though they're still a good team, and they're not. So they're getting it for both sides. Their team is garbage, and everybody still hates them. So, I, you know, you got to give them some love for that. But um, th- the bottom line is they're losing the Dak is elite argument. They're losing the Dak is, is disrespected and should be considered a top five, top ten at least quarterback. They're losing that argument. And they're really, really mad. Just to give you a little bit of, of background of, of what I've walked into and realized, there is a Philadelphia Eagles, that he's a part of the network, Philly Take with RB is the name of his YouTube channel, but for whatever reason, he's ragging on this this Cowboys guy, and he's got a bunch of highlights, and one of them is just him being completely distressed and distraught. This was two days ago when it, it became clear that he had to stop saying that uh, Dak was going to get a contract. Now, the audio is terrible because the it's very, very quiet, and he's got this music playing in the background, so it's kind of hard to hear him, but let's give it a shot just to give you an idea of how depressed Dallas Cowboys fans are over this whole situation. We're less than 24 hours away because at 4 o'clock Eastern time, or should we say New York time, that's the end of it. No further discussion. I'm in a bad mood today. I'm in a bad mood. I've had some people really piss me off. I literally told somebody, just don't say another word because if you do, I'm going to cuss you out. Just get the F away from me. So again, it's it's interesting because it's not big news for us, but... It is for some other people. And it should be somewhat exciting. You know, because the Cowboys, in my opinion, are a threat. But they're on razor-thin ice. You know, the Dallas Cowboys are a team that could go either way. They're kind of similar to the Packers in that the pieces seem to be there, but can they put it all together? Obviously, brand new head coach. Um, They've still got, you know, Smith, Martin, and Collins along that offensive line. Great offensive line. Dak Prescott is a good quarterback. You know, I'm kind of giving him a hard time a little bit. But Ezekiel Elliott, Amari Cooper, we'll see what CeeDee Lamb can do. Lawrence is one of the better pass rushers in football. But, you know, not much else going on in defense. Some decent players, not really elite players. Clinton Dix is a short-term deal. Leighton Vander Esch completely fell off. He's got injury issues. They don't really have much along that defensive line outside of Lawrence. Lawrence, by the way, is 28 years old and has had a regression three years in a row, well, two years in a row, technically, 2017, 91, 2018, 88, 2019, 86, still very good, but it just, it's one of those things, man, again, the Dallas Cowboys seem like they're on the verge, but things are also falling, that offensive line is eroding quickly, Tyron Smith, Tyron Smith was, was part of that elite offensive line, but basically he's been going backwards since 2015, Lael Collins had an elite year, but it was his only really good year, and he might just regress back to the mean anyways. That's their right tackle. Connor Williams, who they drafted in the second round, thought would be a great addition. He's been pretty garbage for two straight years. They don't have a center. Um, It might just be the uh, right guard, Zach Martin, and nobody else. They don't have a tight end anymore. And so, again, they're hanging on by a thread. They want to believe they're still an elite team. They know they have some pieces here. And now they're not, and and I think most Dallas Cowboys fans despise their owner. I really do. I think they despise Jerry. I think he's a, 
it's weird. It's most people really dislike the Dallas Cowboys, but I think a lot of people kind of respect Jerry or at least like Jerry as like an entertainment figure. Dallas Cowboys are the opposite. Obviously they love the Dallas Cowboys, but they can't stand Jerry Jones because they don't like his decisions. And I can understand that he's, he's a businessman. He's, he's, a, he's very good at making money. But I think the football people that are on the team, on the staff, including his own son, um, you know, the classic example was they drafted an offensive lineman. It may have been Martin. I'm not sure. Zach Martin um, classically ripped the card out of his dad's hand that was he was about to turn in. That was Johnny Manziel. He was going to turn in the card for Johnny Manziel. And, and as the story goes, his son ripped that card out of his hand and said, absolutely not. So no deal for Dacky Prescott. There were several people that did get big deals. I already mentioned Derrick Henry. And again, um, Titans fans were doing backflips, man. We're talking about a running back. But you got to understand the context. This team has won in the regular season more than nine games zero times in the last ten years. Ten years! Including 2019, by the way. They were nine and seven. But you know what? They really kicked it into gear at the end of the year. They got into the playoffs, and they started just smashing people's faces. And a lot of people think it's a fluke, but let me remind you of something that I've noticed, a little bit of a trend. There's always a team that slips in. That team slips in, typically does, again, sorry for the hissing noise, that's that machinery in the background. It's not actually a machine, but I'm calling it that because I don't really care. I hope it's offended. I hope it hates me because I hate it. Your mom's a toaster, bro. Totally burned them. There is traditionally a team that sneaks in that you feel like shouldn't necessarily be there that goes on to be the next. I said the Baltimore Ravens were my team for last year. They snuck in. Everybody laughed at them. Their head coach got a contract, and it's like, (laughs) you morons extended him. He's a terrible coach. And this young guy that you drafted is the worst quarterback in history. You guys are doomed. Now the Baltimore Ravens are, are in some people's mind, Super Bowl favorites. I mean, obviously the Chiefs are in the way. But outside of the Chiefs, I mean, they're right there. Classically, the Seattle Seahawks. People were furious that year they got into the playoffs. Furious. They had no business. And that was the year Marshawn Lynch became beast mode. And he just ripped apart. I forget who it was. But it was a team that they were not supposed to beat. They beat them. And so that kind of quieted some people. But the point is, it seems like there's a lot of teams who kind of click that are about to go off, go off kind of just at the end of the last season. Right, things are just kind of coming together all of a sudden, and everyone thinks you're still a joke, and here they come. So, it's, listen, this is this is they, they got a glimmer of hope. In the last ten years, the team has been. Let's just do eleven years because why not? Eight and eight, six and ten, nine and seven, six and ten, seven and nine, two and fourteen, three and thirteen, nine and seven, nine and seven, nine and seven, nine and seven. They've been nine and seven five of the last ten years. The other five years have been worse than that. But they get a glimmer of hope, and Derrick Henry is much... Listen, anybody else in the NFL can talk about how you don't pay running backs. If you're a Tennessee Titans fan, you got to have Derrick Henry. He's the only reason you have any hope of beating 9-7 and seven and getting back to the playoffs. Again, you want to talk about razor thin. Forget all your theories and formulas and all of this nonsense. We need Derrick Henry, and they got him. So the, the, the Titans fans, as I've learned, again... Just started following the, uh, it's called Titan Upload, if you're curious. He was all jacked up. They are in love with their GM. They're super excited about the work that he's done. He threw a jab at Matt LaFleur. I wanted to smack him a little bit, but I let it go. Very excited about um, Derrick Henry, and I can understand it. Now, it's a little bit of a different situation for the Green Bay Packers. As much as Aaron Jones is, is huge, I think the Packers are a team that's going to definitely fall in line with what is more responsible. So I don't have a ton of hope. However, Derrick Henry's contract was only for 12 and a half per year. On a per year basis, Christian McCaffrey signed a $16 million a year deal. And you think, well, that's not really fair. He's like a wide receiver running back hybrid. Okay, Ezekiel Elliott got a $15 million a year deal. He just got that. Le'Veon Bell, when he went to the Jets last year, got $13 million. So I don't know if it's coronavirus that is that is causing people to just accept contracts. But this is not, I mean, he's a 26-year-old dude. Le'Veon Bell signed $13.125 million at 27. David Johnson, um, who went to the Texans, got 13. The guy who's been injured his whole career, he had one good year. He's 29 years old. He got $13 million. Derrick Henry got 12 and a half. 
And you think, well, that's just per year. That's not guarantees. It's even worse for guarantees. He got twenty-five million guaranteed. Leonard Fournette got twenty-seven. Saquon Barkley, as he on his rookie contract, got thirty-one point two million. David Johnson, who I talked about, got thirty-two million. Le'Veon Bell got thirty-five million at twenty-seven years old. Christian McCaffrey got thirty-six point five. Ezekiel Elliott got fifty million guaranteed from the Dallas Cowboys. So things might be contracting a little bit. I don't know, uh, but but. You know, you also look at Chris Jones. Um, now, listen, you you can say whatever you want in terms of well, it, you know, it's it's not about coronavirus. It's it's just the you know Aaron Donald got twenty two and a half, but he's not Aaron Donald. Okay, but Aaron Donald got this what two years ago? Yeah, I I believe that this is a normal year. Chris Jones breaks the record, no question. DeForest Buckner, by the way, just signed on with the Colts. $21 million. Chris Jones got paid less. Chris Jones is a better football player than DeForest Buckner as an interior player. He's better, and he got less. At the exact same age as DeForest Buckner. A real deal for Chris Jones isn't $20 million a year. It's at least twenty-two and a half, which is what Aaron Donald got. In terms of go- total guarantees, by the way, Aaron Donald got $87 million. Chris Jones got sixty. Now, the one big money guy was Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett got $100 million guaranteed. The highest guaranteed to this point was Khalil Mack, who got $90 million. It was uh, less money total. Khalil Mack getting $141 million, Miles Garrett getting 125 But the average per year of $25 million also tops Khalil Mack, who's at 23 and a half. So coronavirus not really affecting Miles Garrett very much, or the Cleveland Browns for that matter. Um, but you also have to take into account the Cleveland Browns are sitting at about $40 million in cap space. So they don't have as much to worry about, especially when you factor in how they can structure this. Obviously, he's not getting $25 million in his first year. I haven't seen the contract. I doubt it's been laid out how it's structured at this point. It's relatively new news. But the Cleveland Browns are not concerned. They know they need to lock him up. They gave him a contract because because you want to lock, you want to lock your guys up. They wanted to get a deal done, and um, they're not going to play the coronavirus game. Um, and I think that's why a lot of guys didn't get deals. And the two two guys outside of Miles Garrett that did get deals kind of got not as good as I would have expected. I mean, Chris Jones was decent, but you know the Chiefs they don't have nearly as much money as the Browns. Tennessee is sitting on a decent chunk, and in fact, that's part of the thing that Tennessee fans are excited about. They believe strongly that they're in contention with the remaining cap, which I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know if anybody really does with uh, the Derrick Henry contract. I don't think really being fully finalized. Maybe it is. Uh, over the cap has him at $6 million this year, which would leave Tennessee still with uh, $23.6 million. So they believe that they are in strong contention for Jadavian Clowney, which really would put the Tennessee Titans in a strong position. It really would. But anyways, that's about it for um, contract type stuff. The biggest news, and I alluded to this a couple days ago, there's something going on in Washington outside of the name change. I wasn't sure exactly what it was. It sounds like there is some kind of a bombshell investigative report coming out. Sounds like the team is aware of it. They know what's coming out, probably because they're aware of what's been going on. And so you've had not only firings, you've had a lot of people jumping ship. Um, You've had reporters asking about people leaving, and the team has said no comment. Which, when you have a, a... a broadcast announcer retire and you ask the team to make a comment about this guy who is a staple of your franchise, just give us a statement about him. And their response is no comment. Um, why? (laughs) Unless there's something behind it, which it turns out there is. And in fact, there is some talk that it is, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. There's a, there's been a lot of scandals going on that reach to the highest levels. It sounds like maybe Schneider, the owner may not be personally, um, tied to any of this, but it's it's bad enough that he had to have known what was going on. Um, you know, things like drugs. Um, I saw a news clip from two years ago, even on ESPN, that talked about cheerleaders being very poorly treated, including basically just using them to, you know, how can I say this, impress donors. Right, big money donors, and um, which I, I don't even know what that means. I didn't know you had people that supported the team financially. I thought they'd, but whatever, people that pay big money, the guys that have the 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 season box seats and everything else, whatever, the the big money players out there, um, they would be, you know, put out on party boats, and here would come the cheerleaders, and apparently the cheerleaders weren't really ta- taught about it. 
told about it and were just kind of pushed into these situations that they didn't want to be in. Um, these people were invited to photo shoots when these women were not exactly comfortable with people they don't know being around. Just really inappropriate type stuff. And that's just something that I haven't heard directly. This is something from two years ago, but you add in all the other stuff that's coming out. Apparently, Jay Gruden uh, might be involved. Uh, you know, probably not fair to name names before it happens, but I'm just telling you, it's it's to the highest level so that the assumption is it's it's over for the Redskins. Um, it's one of the worst teams in football. It's one of the worst owners in football. It's one of the worst stadiums in football. Um, and so, you know, the owner, even if he doesn't step down, he may be forced out. I don't know exactly how that could happen, but I, I think they would find a way to make that a thing. I'm sure he would get plenty of money to do so. You know, financially, he'd be fine, but I also think he's a pretty stubborn guy. But at the end of the day, he ended up changing the name. He caved. Why? Because nobody would be willing to support him, financially especially. Um, if this stuff comes out, he's, th- nobody is going to support the Washington Redskins with this guy in it if the, if things are going to happen as expected. By the way, that bombshell report is expected to come out today or tomorrow. And it just sounds like um, it's a really, really terrible environment and a and probably somewhat abusive environment. Um, and so the expectation at the very least is that a lot of people are going to be leaving and new ownership is coming in. That could be a good, I mean, Redskins fans obviously are excited about it because they've been um, captained by a guy that is basically just abusing this team, which is a really unfortunate reality for some of these teams is that winning is secondary or maybe not even. This is a, it's a money-making endeavor, but it's also a power play. The amount of things you're able to do when you are the owner of a football team are really impressive. And you've got some of these owners, and I've gone on rants about owners in the past, some of these owners don't treat the team the way it should be treated, with the amount of respect and care that uh, a team should be treated. Again, there should be parity. The NFL is built so that you know the, the good teams become bad and the bad teams become good, but instead we find this pool of teams that kind of stay at the top and a pool of teams that stay at the bottom, and that's for a reason. And the Redskins are one of those teams, and uh, hopefully they're able to, to use this. And Not that I want anybody to get, get hurt, and I, I hate the thought of, of people's careers and lives and, and possibly marriages and families and everything else being ruined. I also don't want any form of corruption or illicit activity to continue in there. You know, especially if there's any abuses or whatever, uh, that needs to come to light. And the team needs to be, it needs to be competitive. You know, as a Packers fan, I don't want the Chiefs to ever, or the the Redskins to ever be a good team. But you want the NFL to be a really good product. And it's just not going to be with these kind of garbage teams in the NFL. You know, when you just have four or five teams that are good and everybody else is just, you know, they're using this team so they can have blowout parties, you know, or whatever kind of nonsense you can, you know, schmooze it up with with senators and and actors you you need to go i mean you can do that i don't care you want to have big parties at your house go for it but your primary goal is to put in the hours put in the work to make sure this is the greatest team in football and again some owners just aren't doing that but again it this could be up to and including the team gets moved gets demolished gets whatever um and you you just hope there's not a lot of collateral damage obviously a, a A big pile of new guys came in, uh, most notably Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera brought in some of his staff. Um, You know, kind of this new era is is expected to kind of take over. And, um, again, there is some concern that if Dan Snyder goes, this whole thing gets blown up and Ron Rivera is out of a job. But, um, you know, I I doubt it would be for very long anyways. Ron Rivera is very – Rivera is revered. Sorry, that was stupid. He's revered. It is a very close word to Rivera, right? Maybe it means revered in uh, in Polish or whatever. <laughs> Actually, I just Googled it. Um, Rivera, according to Google, from Spanish, means riverbank. So I think I think my thing was better. But riverbank is I mean riverbank is cool. I just did it for Schlip, and it turns out it literally is Slip, which is really depressing because I was called Ryan Slip as a kid. I mean, to be fair, as far as insults go in elementary school, Slip. Not that bad. As long as you don't fall on the ice, it's not that bad of an insult. But um, it's also a stupid name, so there's that. I want to know who my great-great-great-great-great-grandfather is that came up with with being the slips. Like, I don't know, slip is a cool word. Right, guys? And how did last names come to be anyways? 
I don't know. Lots of lots of questions, but I won't Google that. I'll wait until the the thing is done before I Google it. For the record, Ryan in uh, Old Irish means little king. So, so get out of my face. And probably not that little either. Like like probably closer to mid size to actually kind of huge king in terms of status. I don't know. I'm just interpreting the uh, the old Gaelic or whatever it is. I'm I'm guessing it's small to huge somewhere in that range. But anyways, again, be on the lookout for uh, for a big change coming in uh, in Washington, which actually it kind of works. I mean, from my perspective, again, I'm I'm kind of taking this cavalierly, and I probably shouldn't. But if they're gonna change the name, and again, I, I hate when names change, cities change. It's just like I ugh, I don't want to have to learn a new thing every time I have to say Las Vegas Raiders. I have to correct myself because it's not Vegas. There is no team in Vegas. But if you're going to change, just change everything. Change the logo. It'll help me to remember it better. If it's a new logo, new city, that's another question. What's the new name? What's the new city? Maybe they could be the uh, Whitewater Warhawks. <laughs> They'll just move to Whitewater, Wisconsin. I think what they should do is just move to Portland. Portland, Oregon. They don't have a team. It's the West Coast, so just get as far away as possible. The NFC East already has the Cowboys, which are probably closer to the West Side than the East Side anyways. So you're just covering the whole map. You've got uh, New York, Philly, Dallas, and Portland. And then you can stick it to that guy who uh, decided to buy up every naming right to everything, you know, Washington Wizard, Washington everything W, and just be like, haha, we're not Washington anything anymore. We're the Portland Pea Shooters. So you just lost all that money. Way to go. By the way, I'm going to buy up the naming rights for the Portland Pea Shooters because I'm just feeling lucky, man. I'm just taking this whole fat stack putting it on red 12 i'm just feel i'm feeling it but anyways i'm a leaver at that a little bit more of an nfl centric day but you know whatever get a couple of those in the off season plus again fairly big news but you folks have yourselves a fantastic thursday i will talk to you tomorrow have a good one bye-bye